Join us on a journey through time as we explore some of the most ferocious, intimidating, and downright terrifying creatures that once roamed the Earth. From giant land predators to beasts of the ocean, we'll be grateful we don't gotta face these creatures today. Pentacopterus decorahensis. Pentacopterus decorahensis was a fearsome creature that lived in the ancient seas about 467 million years ago. It was a type of ureterid, or sea scorpion, an extinct group of aquatic arthropods that are related to modern spiders and, of course, scorpions. It was the oldest and one of the largest ureterids ever discovered, reaching up to 1.7 meters in length. It had a sleek body with a long tail, a pair of large pincers with spines, and a mouth full of sharp, sharp teeth. Pentacopterus was a fierce hunter that ambushed its prey from the murky waters. It could use its powerful pincers to grab and crush its victims, which may have included fish, mollusks, and other arthropods. It could also use its tail as a weapon or a rudder to steer through the water. It lived in a time when life was diversifying rapidly in the oceans, and it may have been one of the top predators of its ecosystem. Pentacopterus decorhensis was discovered in Iowa, USA, in a fossil deposit that preserved its exoskeleton in exceptional detail. More than 150 specimens were collected, including juveniles and adults. The fossils reveal a lot about the anatomy and evolution of this ancient animal, and show that it was very different from other Ureterans. Meganura Meganura was a giant dragonfly-like insect that lived about 300 million years ago, during the Carboniferous period. It had a wingspan of up to 70 centimeters, making it one of the largest flying insects ever. It was also a fearsome predator, capable of catching and eating other insects, amphibians, and even small reptiles. How deadly was it? Well, that depends on who you ask. If you were a tiny frog or lizard living in the swampy forests of the ancient world, you'd probably be terrified of it. It could swoop down on you with its powerful jaws and razor-sharp teeth and rip you apart in seconds. You'd have no chance of escaping or fighting back. You'd just be a snack for this monstrous bug. But if you were a human, you'd have nothing to fear from Meganura. In fact, you'd never even see one alive, possibly, because they went extinct long before humans evolved. And even if they somehow survived until now, they wouldn't be able to survive in the modern atmosphere, which has much less oxygen than ones that they were adapted to. They would suffocate and die pretty quickly, and you could easily squash them with your shoe or spray them with insecticide. You'd be the predator, and they'd be the prey. Hallucigenia fortis Hallucigenia fortis was a strange creature that lived in the Cambrian period about 500 million years ago. It looked like a worm with legs and spines, but it wasn't a worm at all. It was actually a lobopodian, a distant relative of velvet worms, water bears, and arthropods. It had a round head with eyes and a mouth, and two pairs of tentacles near its head. It also had eight pairs of legs with claws and seven pairs of spines on its back. It was about two centimeters long, which may not sound impressive, but it was one of the largest animals in its environment. It probably uses tentacles and legs to crawl on the seafloor and find food, such as algae or small animals. It might have used its spines to defend itself from predators or to impress potential mates. Hallucigenia fortis was not deadly at all, unless you were a microscopic organism that it could swallow. It was harmless to humans and other large animals, unless you stepped on it by accident and got pricked by its spines. Then you might feel a slight pain or maybe even a tickle, but maybe nothing at all, because this spiny worm is extinct and you'll never see one in real life. Arthropleura Meet Arthropleura, a giant relative of millipedes that lived about 300 million years ago. This beast grew up to 2.6 meters long and 50 centimeters wide, making it the largest known land invertebrate of all time. Just imagine a subway train made of legs and armor plates and you get the idea. But of course, the million dollar question is, was it deadly? Well, some scientists think it was a peaceful herbivore that fed on decaying plant matter. It would avoid predators with its size and hard exoskeleton. But others think it was a fierce carnivore that hunted smaller animals with its powerful jaws and venomous fangs. Truth is, don't know for sure, because we don't have any fossil evidence of its mouth parts or digestive system. We can make some educated guesses, though. Arthropleura lived in a time when oxygen levels were much higher than today. This allowed insects and arthropods to grow much larger. It also lived in warm and humid forests that were rich in plant life and had few large predators. These factors suggest that Arthropleura had little need to be aggressive or defensive and could have been a gentle giant that roamed the forest floor in search of food. Andrew Sarkis Meet Andrew Sarkis, a savage mammal that roamed the Earth a whopping 45 million years ago. This guy was no joke. He was one of the largest land carnivores ever and had a skull that could make Shaquille O'Neal feel small. It was about three feet long, people. With jaws and teeth that could crush bones, Andrew Sarkis was built to be a killing machine. Now here's where things get even weirder. Andrew Sarkis was related to both whales and hippos, but it looked like a giant wolf with hooves. 
Just try to imagine that. Wolf on steroids with hooves? Ugh, no thanks. Scientists still aren't sure what this beast ate, but some believe it was a scavenger, while others think it was an active hunter that could take down animals as massive as rhinos and elephants. Either way, it's safe to say that you wouldn't want to cross paths with this fellow on a casual walk through the park. What's even more insane is that Andrew Sarkis was so powerful it had no natural enemies. Except maybe other Andrew Sarkises. Andrew Sarkia. Yeah. Andrew Sarchi? Yeah, that thing. Yeah, it was the king of its ecosystem until it went extinct at the end of the Eocene Epoch, along with many other mammals. Maybe it's a good thing that it's not around anymore, because let's be real, we wouldn't stand a chance against this monstrous mammal. Allosaurus Allosaurus was a type of dinosaur that lived about 150 million years ago, during the Jurassic period. It was a fierce predator that could grow up to 12 meters long and weigh up to 2.5 tons. It had a large head with sharp teeth, powerful jaws, and a pair of horns above its eyes. It also had strong legs, long arms with three-fingered claws, and a long tail that helped it balance. Allosaurus was one of the top predators of its time, hunting down large herbivorous dinosaurs like Stegosaurus, Diplodocus, and Apatosaurus. It more than likely used its speed and agility to ambush its prey, biting and slashing with its teeth and claws. It may have also hunted in packs, cooperating with other Allosauruses to take down bigger or far dangerous prey. However, it was not invincible. It faced competition from other predators like Ceratosaurus and Toriosaurus, as well as defense mechanisms from its prey like spikes, plates, and tails. It also had to deal with injuries and infections from its frequent fights. Some fossils of Allosaurus show signs of broken bones, bite marks, and diseases. Allosaurus may have also been cannibalistic, eating its own kind when food was scarce or when it needed to assert dominance. Dire Wolf the dire wolf was a large and powerful carnivore that lived during the Pleistocene Epoch, about 1.8 million to 10,000 years ago. It was similar to a modern gray wolf, but bigger, stronger, and with a more robust skull and teeth. Dire wolf could grow up to 1.5 meters long and weigh up to 80 kilos. It was one of the most common predators in North America, hunting in packs and feeding on large herbivores like bison, horses, camels, and mammoths. This predator was so deadly that it could even compete with other formidable predators like saber-toothed cats, short-faced bears, and giant hyenas. It had a powerful bite force of about 1,300 newtons, which could crush bone and pierce flesh with ease. Also had a high stamina and endurance bar, which allowed it to chase down its prey over long distances. Eventually, they went extinct about 10,000 years ago, along with many other megafauna species. The exact cause of its extinction is still unknown, but it may have been due to a combo of factors such as climate change, habitat loss, disease, competition, and human hunting. Demetrodon The Demetrodon lived way before it was cool to be a dinosaur, about 280 million years ago, and he wasn't one of them. No, he was actually a synapsid, a group of animals that includes mammals and their ancestors. Demetrodon was basically the OG gangster of the prehistoric world. Let's talk about that large sail on his back, made of skin stretched over long spines. Just what was up with that? Well, scientists think it was used for multiple purposes. One, to regulate his body temperature like a built-in AC unit, and two, to attract the ladies. But Demetrodon wasn't just a pretty face with a fancy sail. This guy was a fierce predator with sharp teeth and powerful jaws. He was basically the Chuck Norris of the prehistoric world. He could grow up to 4.6 meters long and weigh up to 250 kilos. Like the size of a small car, and just what did he eat then? Well, just other animals like amphibians, reptiles, and fish. No big deal. He had no real natural enemies except for other Demetrodons. That's right, he was so deadly even his own kind had to watch their backs from each other. Utah Raptor the Utah Raptor, a species of carnivorous dinosaur, inhabited the region now known as Utah approximately 125 million years ago, during the early Cretaceous period. The Utah Raptor was a formidable predator and one of the most imposing members of the raptor family, which also includes well-known dinosaurs such as the Velociraptor. Unlike its small and agile relatives, the Utah Raptor was much larger, standing at approximately 6 to 7 meters in length and weighing up to 1,000 kilos. One of its defining features was its long, curved claw on each foot. These measured up to 22 centimeters in length. This razor-sharp claw was used by the Utah Raptor to slash and stab its prey, which included a wide variety of animals ranging from small mammals to larger herbivorous dinosaurs. With its powerful jaws filled with sharp teeth, the Utah Raptor was capable of taking down even heavily armored dinosaurs such as the Ankylosaurus. Recent discoveries have revealed that the Utah Raptor was also covered in feathers. This makes it one of the largest known feathered dinosaurs. These feathers may have served multiple purposes, including insulation, display, and possibly even as aids in hunting by improving maneuverability and reducing noise while moving through vegetation. 
Sorophaganax. Ah, Sorophaganax, the lizard-eating master of the dinosaur kingdom. This ginormous carnivore lived in North America about 150 million years ago, during a time when everything was bigger and scarier. But don't let its name fool ya. This dino wasn't exactly the sharpest tool in the shed. You see, this guy was a bit of a clumsy elf, had a bulky body, short arms, and a tiny brain. Yeah, you heard that right, a tiny brain. So while it may have looked intimidating, it was more like a bumbling giant than a fierce predator. In fact, Sorrel Faganix relied on scavenging more than hunting. It would often stumble upon dead or dying animals and feast on their carcasses. And when it did decide to hunt, it wasn't exactly successful. Its slow and clumsy nature made it easy for faster and more agile prey to make a quick getaway. That's not the only thing that made this guy a bit of the joke in the dino world. It also had a bad habit of biting off more than it could chew, literally. Sometimes it would try to swallow large bones or horns, only to choke on them and die. Just imagine that. The mighty lizard-eating master taken down by a bone. Majungasaurus. This fierce carnivorous dinosaur roamed the land of Madagascar about 70 million years ago and belonged to the Abelosaurids family. Known for their short arms and stubby fingers, the Abelosaurids were one of the most ferocious dinosaur families in existence, and Majungasaurus was their superstar. One of the most unique features of Majungasaurus was the large horn-like bump on its forehead that could rival even the most impressive unicorn horns. This bump was not just for looks, as it may have been used for fighting or display. Just imagine a Majungasaurus shaking its head and displaying its bump, daring other dinosaurs to try and mess with it. Look about a show-off. Majungasaurus was not one to back down from a fight either. With powerful jaws full of serrated teeth, it could slice through flesh and bone with ease. Its strong neck and muscular tail also helped it balance and maneuver while hunting down its prey. The smaller dinosaurs at the time would run for their lives at the sight of a Majungasaurus, and even its own kind wasn't safe from its cannibalistic tendencies. Though it was not the biggest or the fastest dinosaur, Majungasaurus more than made up for it with its deadly skills. It measured about 6 meters long and weighed about a ton, which is about as heavy as a small car. Just imagine running into one of those beasts on a stroll through Madagascar instead of a happy King Julian. Thyla Cosmolus. Imagine a giant fuzzy creature with long curved fangs that protruded from its mouth even when it was closed. In a nutshell, that's what Thylacosmilus is. This little weasel was a hunter, a skilled predator that hunted large herbivores like ground sloths and glyptodonts. It was a formidable foe using its powerful jaws and razor sharp fangs to pierce through their thick armor and flesh. Just imagine the strength of those jaws, if they could open even the toughest of jars without breaking a sweat. Don't worry though, this guy didn't hunt humans because he lived millions of years before we did. If we ever encounter one today, we'd probably find it cute and cuddly, like a giant furry kitty with dental problems. After trying to take care of those fangs, though, I feel like going to the dentist every day. Get this, though. Thylaka Smile has even had a pouch on its belly like a marsupial. I like to think that he used it to store snacks for later, like a prehistoric fanny pack. Maposaurus. This enormous carnivorous dinosaur lived in South America approximately 100 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period, and let me tell you, it was no ordinary dino. Picture this, colossal theropod measuring up to 12.6 meters in length and weighing a whopping 6.5 tons. It's heavier than three African elephants put together. Mapusaurus had a massive skull with powerful jaws and razor-sharp teeth that could chomp through flesh and bone like it was nobody's business. And let's not forget about its strong arms with three-fingered claws that could grasp and slash its prey with ease. It was probably a pack hunter that could take down large sauropods like Argentinosaurus, one of the biggest animals to ever grace the planet. That's gotta be a sight to behold to see Maposaurus and its crew working together to bring down a massive dinosaur that was bigger than a basketball court. Talk about teamwork. But where did Maposaurus get its name from, you ask? Well, let me tell you, it was named after the word for Earth in the language of the Mapuche people, who live in the region where its fossils were found. And boy, did this creature shake up the Earth. It was a fearsome predator that dominated its environment and had no natural enemies. Basilosaurus. Okay, now before you start thinking that Basilosaurus was a dinosaur, let me set the record straight. Despite its name, which means King Lizard, Basilosaurus was actually a mammal. Let me tell you, this creature was no ordinary mammal. At up to 18 meters in length and weighing up to a whopping 60 tons, Basilosaurus was a true behemoth. With a long snake-like body, a small head filled with sharp teeth and powerful jaws that could crush bones, this creature was one of the largest and most deadly predators of its time. Heck, it even had tiny hind legs that were useless for swimming, but may have helped it mate, or even steer. Talk about an evolutionary bonus. Basilosaurus had a taste for blood, and it wasn't picky about where it came from. 
It hunted other whales, fish, sharks, and anything else that crossed its path. Heck, it was so fierce that it even attacked its own kind. Bite marks found on fossilized bones suggest that Pessoasaurus was the ultimate killing machine, and it probably had no natural enemies. Talk about being top of the food chain. But as they say, all things big and awesome must come to an end, as along with many other marine mammals, Pessoasaurus went extinct at the end of the Eocene Epoch. Quetzalcoatlus Get ready to meet Quetzalcoatlus, the giant flying reptile that ruled the late Cretaceous period like a boss. This bad boy was named after the feathered serpent god of Aztec mythology, and with a wingspan of up to 10 meters, it was one of the largest flying creatures to ever grace the skies. When it came to hunting, Quetzalcoatlus was no joke. It was a deadly predator that went after small dinosaurs, fish, and carry on with gusto. Flying at speeds of up to 80 kilometers or 50 miles an hour, it could cover a lot of ground quickly, and it was a master at soaring on thermal currents. This flying behemoth probably hunted by swooping down from the air and grabbing its prey with its toothless beak. Alternatively, it could have walked on all fours and snapped at anything that moved. Don't think that Quetzalcoatlus was just a brute with brawn and no brains, though. This ancient giant was also pretty darn smart, with a large brain and keen eyesight that helped it navigate and locate food. It may have even lived in colonies and communicated with its fellow Quetzalcoatluses using sounds or gestures. And get this, they've even been able to sense magnetic fields and use them for orientation. Talk about a superpower. Chronosaurus The Chronosaurus lived during the early Cretaceous period, a whopping 125 million years ago. Back then, the seas of Australia and Colombia were its hunting grounds. This BC was named after Kronos, the Greek god who devoured his own offspring, a fitting name for such a savage predator. This fierce creature was known as a Pliosaur, which meant it had a ginormous head, stubby neck, and four flippers that could make even the strongest swimmer tremble with fear. With its powerful jaws and razor-sharp teeth, the Kronosaurus was the stuff of nightmares for other marine creatures. It was a true sea monster that could take down even the most massive prey with ease. This Pliosaur was one of the largest and deadliest ever to exist, measuring up to a whopping 10 meters in length and weighing as much as 10 tons. That's heavier than two adult elephants. Here's a fun fact for you, though. Some folks believe that some displays of Kronosaurus fossils may have exaggerated its size by adding extra vertebrae. So maybe it wasn't quite as big as we thought, but it was still a force to be reckoned with. Forosarcos once upon a time in South America, during the Miocene Epoch, there lived a group of birds that were so fierce and terrifying that they earned the name the Terror Birds. Among these feathered predators, the Forosarcus reigned supreme, towering at a height of 2.5 meters and weighing up to a whopping 130 kilos. With its sharp hook tip beak, this bird was not to be trifled with. It used its powerful jaws to kill and tear apart its prey, which included everything from rodents and small mammals to reptiles and even other birds. And let's be real, who wouldn't be terrified of a bird that can make a meal out of its own kind? But it wasn't just the Forosarcos' beak that made it such a formidable hunter. This bird also had long, strong legs that allowed it to run at breakneck speeds and catch up to its prey with ease. It was the top predator in its habitat, feared and respected by all who knew it. Giant Ground Sloth Let's talk about the OG big boys of South America, North America, and some Caribbean islands, the Giant Ground Sloths. They were herbivores, but they weren't pacifists. They had some serious claws that they used to dig for roots and tubes, as well as to defend themselves from predators. When it comes to size, these sloths were no joke. They grew up to six meters long and weigh up to four tons. Now I know what you're thinking. Holy guacamole, that's a massive creature. Are they, are they, are they dangerous? Eh, not really. These guys are mostly peaceful and slow moving, but don't get too comfortable around them. They could still pose a threat if they feel threatened or cornered. Some species even had thick fur and bony plates to protect themselves from attacks. If a giant ground sloth did feel like getting into a scuffle, they had a few tricks up their sleeve, or should I say, up their claws. They could swipe at their enemies with their powerful forelimbs and claws, or just straight up crush them with their weight. Some evidence even suggests that humans may have hunted these sloths for food or sport back in the day. I guess they figured if they were going to go up against something that big, they might as well make it interesting. Dinosuchus the Dinosuchus, also known as the Terra Crocodile, was a stuff of nightmares for creatures living in North America during the late Cretaceous period. This monstrous creature ruled the land and waterways for around 80 to 73 million years ago, making it one of the most fearsome predators of all time. If you think crocs today are terrifying, then you got no idea what you're in for. The Dinosuchus was a massive beast, with some specimens measuring up to 12 meters in length and weighing a whopping 8.5 tons. It was so big that it's hard to imagine anything being able to take it down. 
What really made the Dinosuchus so fearsome was its massive skull and robust teeth. This monster had a bite force that could crush bones like they were made of paper, and its prey ranged from turtles to fish to even other crocodiles. Yeah, you heard that right, the Dinosuchus was so tough that it wasn't afraid to take on its own kind. Spinosaurus Spinosaurus was arguably the baddest, meanest, and most savage carnivorous dinosaur to ever roam North Africa during the Cretaceous period. This guy was a real monster, measuring up to a whopping 15 meters in length and weighing in at a hefty 7 tons. What really set the Spinosaurus apart from other big predators of its time was its sail-like structure on its back, similar to the Dimetrodon. Now, scientists are still debating what this thing was used for, but some say it was used for thermoregulation. Others think it was a display for, you know, like, how big and bad I am kind of thing. Some even say it was for balance. The Spinosaurus was also adapted for a semi-aquatic lifestyle. With its long and narrow snout filled with conical teeth, this beast was built for catching fish like it was going out of style. It even had nostrils near its eyes so it could breathe while it was partially submerged in the water. And let's not forget about its webbed feet, perfect for swimming and chasing down prey. All in all, the Spino was one tough customer, taking down everything from frogs to other dinosaurs. See you all next time!